Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are gathered here today to talk unexpected. Girl. We have an entire pantheon of teens getting it on. Uh, getting freaky. Make him baby. Oh, my God. We met another couple today. We did. We can even call them a couple. A couple of kids. Yeah. A couple of kids. Well, it's love at first sight. Is that what it is? They're meant to be forever. Well, I can't wait to get into it. But before we do, we have to issue our standard disclaimer, which is... Hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. We have dumb opinions and we're not going to apologize for it. So if you're sensitive, you might want to find yourself another dumpster. But if you're down and ready to talk about some teen hoes, welcome (laughs) to this dumpster. Yeah, and if you are down and ready to talk shit with us, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. We're even more crazy over there. If you can believe it. Yeah. And if you are watching on YouTube, finally, please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because truly everything you do helps us to grow this community. And that's what it's all about. It's yeah. about community. Yeah. It's about raccoon love. <laughs> It is. So thank you in advance. Thank you. Okay, so any takeaways from this most recent episode of Unexpected Season 6, Episode 2? Um, I just, uh, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't with these little kids. Yeah. This new couple. I do want to apologize for pronouncing Daquan's name wrong last week. I think she calls him Day-Day. Yeah. And that is Day-Day. what I'm going to call yeah. him. Yeah. It's just Day-Day. Yeah. He seems nice. He seems very she seems shy. She crazy. Quiet and shy. Yes. And just being steamrolled by is her name Ania? Uh, Anaya. 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 Yeah. Anaya. Yeah. yeah. Anaya. I thought that was an interesting couple for sure. Yeah. My takeaway is well, I have a question. My takeaway is a question for you. Oh. So did you <gasps> startle what? when they showed JJ? Uh, <laughs> well, the couch. <laughs> I'm JJ, and I was like, oh my God. that's a big cranium. I did know. you see his big old head? Oh, big old cranium. It's a big antelope of a head jj yes not a lot of brain cells in there it doesn't seem a lot of head not a lot of brain (laughs) brain. (laughs) well i had already seen pictures of him on her instagram because i was facebook or instagram stalking her and i just think he's cringe af is he yeah and i've seen from the previews of this season they aren't using protection yeah i know there's like a pregnancy scare and or she got pregnant by him yeah she has another baby with him i don't know if we'll see it this season but she's got another whole ass baby with him from him raw dogging her. I'm just like, I can't. These kids are so Why? cringe. He's I, 19. I remember like the young men that I had crushes on when I was like 19, 18, 17. They were handsome. Yeah. They were handsome young men who had some things going for them. But like, I just saw this big old head, this big old lopsided oh, no. head listing to one side. I was like, what's happening? <laughs> Why, Jenna? Why? I don't know. She's got weird taste in men. That's she for does. Sure. She's kind of an oddball herself. Uh, kind of. Yeah. yeah. She's sweet, though, I guess. No, oh. she's not sweet. Oh, she was such <laughs> a terror in previous seasons. She was like the worst. Well, I didn't like her attitude with her dad oh, in and this episode either. In previous seasons, she's just terrible to her father, <sighs> who all he's doing is trying to placate her. Right. And like give her everything in the world. She's so spoiled. And she still is. Oh, great. And you can see that. Big yikes. Anyway, I just wondered if you got scared like I did. Anybody else have a jump scare when JJ was on that couch? Just me? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know in the comments below. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into the episode, May Darling. All right. It's entitled Edge of 17, which is a great Stevie Nicks I song. do love Stevie Nicks I so mean, much. Queen. Your generation likes Stevie Nicks, witchy, Duh. witchy woman. Okay. Yeah. It's a good song. She, she's the best. Anyway. Um, we start with Emily and Nick. They're at the racetrack. Okay, somebody said on Reddit or Nate. And, sorry, not Nick. Uh, <laughs> Nate, Nate, the redheaded young man. I, I said Nick. Nate. Nick. <laughs> somebody said on Reddit, and now I can't unsee it. But like Emily, <laughs> what looks like. <laughs> be better in the world, Delia. You can do it. No, I can't. I'm gonna say it. I saw on Reddit. 
Somebody had said that Emily looks as if she has or had, I don't know if it's something you have, but fetal alcohol syndrome. No. Poor baby. I don't, I'm not trying to tease her about it, but I'm like, that might have something to do with the way that she acts and also her level of maturity. Am I a terrible person? <laughs> Am I a terrible person? I'm just sharing what I saw. Well, I mean, her mom seemed like a, a total piece of shit because she's mm-hmm. raised by her dad. But I mean, I'm just going to go uncensored real quick. Okay. Yes, back from uncensored. And sure. let me just be clear. I'm not saying that that's the case. I'm yeah. just saying somebody said that and then I looked it up and I did think maybe it was true. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and it might have something to do with um, her yeah <laughs> anyway back to emily and nate <laughs> yeah she's kind of there let's just say that her and nate are a match made in heaven because he's <laughs> not he's not that, what that great saying? either i mean he i know he's 16 but it's like he barely talks he barely emotes he can't talk she steamrolls him all the time she's bulldozing over him she's snatching things out of his hand she's mothering this young man oh he hates his life too and he should yeah your life is never going to be the same your dad is a fucking druggy deadbeat your Loser. mom is not going to be somebody who likes emily i'm telling you right now oh, she's gonna go toe to toe with emily uh-uh. and then there's emily yeah well but i thought it was interesting because taryn his mom had him at 19 and his dad was 17. So it's like Mm -hmm. history repeating itself where Nate's the younger one. He impregnates this older chick who's totally going to treat him like crap. I just hope he doesn't follow in the same footstep as as his dad. Mm -hmm. His dad seemed like a total piece of crap too because he shows up to his racing gig like acting like dad of the year. With the cameras. I mean, Mm -hmm. and Nate even calls it out. He's only ever there when it's convenient for him. And it was only 10 months ago that his dad, William, realized, finally understood that he was an addict. How did he phrase that? I discovered... (laughs) I discovered I I was an addict. I discovered I was an addict. (laughs) Like, how do you discover you're an addict? Like, I'm pretty sure... Like, you know, all along as you're doing meth and you're drinking all that booze and you're shooting up and you're doing lines, like, you know you're an addict yeah but he discovered it 10 months ago after i don't know 20 years of being an addict okay (laughs) okay sure jan he's like i did a complete 180 and then he's talking about how him and nate are best friends but then nate's talking about how he just doesn't have a good relationship with his dad so i'm like yeah that was disconnect that was that was pretty sad and that's just those ancestral patterns that get passed down from generation to generation and if you're not careful as a parent it's going to show up in your own children and so that's why we're seeing it with Nate showing up because of his dad and mom and if Nate and Emily are not careful it's going to happen to their kid as well. I know and I'm worried about that. Mm -hmm. I mean Emily for what it's worth seems like she does care about the kid and stuff but I'm just like girl you're so dumb. I don't know there's something about her I don't like. I don't know she's kind of crazy a little bit but like she she has no self-aware no and then you want to move in with this kid and his mom when you have the baby i'm like that's not gonna work at all no you're gonna have two women who want to be the head of the household in one household and then you're gonna have this submissive cowed young man who's not gonna know how to speak up yep and then you're gonna have your father on the sidelines who has been taking care of you your entire life supporting you doing the very best that he can with a girl child yep And you're just going to ditch him and go live with these weirdos. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to having to see her break that to her dad. Mm -hmm. And her dad's just going to be devastated because he's going to be like, what the fuck? Like, Mm -hmm. I did my best. What do you mean Taryn knows better than me? When Taryn, it seems like, has a couple baby daddies. She's a single mom. Yeah, I think she's got three kids. She's got Nate. Mm -hmm. She's got a girl. Mm -hmm. And then she's got a two-year-old. And I'm like, is it all from the same meth head daddy? Are you, we got different daddies over here? I bet they're different daddies, which is fine, whatever. But she's a single mom. So none of them are in her life. So I'm like, okay, I don't know. I'm side-eyeing Taryn a little bit. Of course, it's going to be a clusterfuck, which is why we're watching it and why we love it. But I'm just going on record. I do not like Emily. Yeah. She's not aware of her own behavior she's very much got bully energy and plowing right over nate and ultimately taryn energy and she's going to be one of those 
mothers that doesn't let Nate do anything and or if he does, she's going to be criticizing everything he does. So he's not going to know how to be a dad. He's not going to feel good about himself. He hates failure, right? Yeah. Because he came in second in his dirt bike race and he was really feeling bad about himself. But she's going to make him feel like a failure. That is my prediction. Oh, probably. Yeah, I think you're right on that. And even like in some of their comments this episode when he's talking about how important dirt bike racing is to him, He's like, yeah, I'll talk to Emily about it. And she just doesn't understand. And then she is like, no, I do understand. And he like rolls her, rolls his eyes because she's saying this on camera. So I'm like, this probably is proving your point of how she's so unaware of herself. Mm -hmm. You want to act like you're this cool chick, but you're criticizing him constantly. And then because he's mad that he came in second, she's like, he scares me. Right. (laughs) Because I don't know how he's going to be when we have a baby. Okay, like if it's one thing Nate doesn't do is scare me. I know. (laughs) He seems like a very gentle, spirited person. Yep. He's just bummed that he came in second and he's got standards for his sport. Yeah. You wouldn't know anything about that because all you do is bitch. I know, for real. With your wide space eyes. (laughs) I'm I'm looking at your eyes. So mean. I'm not being mean. You are. I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm sorry. It's bad. okay. okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't care. We said politically incorrect, so <laughs> and we meant it. We meant it. Next, we have Jenna and Luca, and Jenna just got all of her shit from Pennsylvania. She's driving down with her daddy, and she picked up Luca from staying the night at Aiden's, and she's officially moving down to Myrtle Beach. Mm-hmm. And this is where we kind of get a little bit more insight into. Well, I do because I haven't watched prior seasons, and I don't want y'all coming for oh, me okay, about we go. that. Okay, here we go. Um. Anyway, uh, we get into more of their relationship between like her and her dad. Her dad says that their relationship has improved over the years. But her relationship with her mom hasn't. So she's having these issues Mm -hmm. with her parents. But she's like, I don't care. I'm going to Myrtle Beach with my boyfriend, JJ. Right. And she also seems to be Mm self-sufficient. So she has a job (laughs) as an influencer. And I guess she promotes baby products and whatnot on on her IG. And she's making a lot of money. And so JJ has latched right on to the gravy train. But on this ride down with her father, who's taking her, hauling all of her stuff, she still strikes me as so ungrateful Mm -hmm. for all the sacrifices that he's made. And when she shows him the promise, the little baby promise ring that JJ gave her. Yeah. The dad is like, well, promise for what? Like, is he promising marriage? And she's immediately annoyed. Yeah. And then he's like, well, I mean, let me ask a question. And she's like, no, you don't get to ask a question. And then he's like, well, I'm going to have to talk to JJ. No, you can't talk to JJ. She is so Mm -hmm. bullheaded. I think that's what Matt calls her because she's just so defiant. Like, he's like, well... JJ should have asked me for permission before giving you a promise ring. She's like, oh, shut up, dad. That's so fucking stupid. I'm 20. I'm an adult. I don't need you. I'm almost 20, which means she just probably turned 19 at the time of filming. So I she's still a teenager. Can't. And while I agree with her that that's kind of an archaic tradition in which women are treated like property and you have to go to the father in order to get permission to have the daughter. And that's lame. I mean, he's just looking out for his child and he wants to have a grown up conversation with her new fucking boyfriend that's in two minutes going to get her pregnant. Oh, for sure. So he wants to know the situation that his daughter is going into and she just fights him every step of the way. She's just so bad. I know. The only point where I was like agreeing with her a little was when the dad was like talking to her about child support with Aiden because she's like... Yeah, I don't need his money. I don't need his financial support. The dad's like, well, it'd be nice if he could get some money, which I mean, that's a fair point. Like it would be nice if Aiden could get off his lazy ass and pay her some child support and not be such a piece of shit. But Jenna's like, no, this is what's best for us. And this is how I can get total control over Luca and I can move to Myrtle Beach away from this toxic asshole. So like, shut up, dad. Yeah, but it's not about you. It's about your son. Exactly. It's money for Luca. It's not money for you to subsidize your lifestyle with Luca. It's directly for your child. Yeah. And he has a right, a legal right. Luca has a legal right 
to this support from Aiden. Yeah. And so you just because you can raise money, just because you have a job as an influencer doesn't mean that Aiden should not be legally providing for his son. Right. You could put all that shit in a fund for his college. You never know how long you're going to be able to influence on IG, but I'm going to predict it's going to be maybe a couple, two, three years. And then what are you going to do? You don't have a proper education. Oh, you're with God. fucking JJ. This big old head. Oh, What's JJ doing for a living? Come on now. I know. Think about it. And we already know that Aiden is going to start screwing with her yep. about custody and visitation and where Luca is. So even though she doesn't think she needs the money, he's going to start messing with her anyway. Oh, 100%. Because I'm like, Jenna, is this all in writing? Like, yeah. did you make him sign something saying she's he doesn't 19. have to do that? Probably not. And so it's just going to be a mess. But maybe JJ makes money. Let's talk about him a little bit. They've known each other since fifth grade. He's 19. Is he selling drugs? <laughs> How's he making money? How is a 19-year-old maybe making enough an money to... he's an to support his wife or his girlfriend and two children because fucking bum ass Aiden isn't sending any money. Is JJ, 19 year old JJ? I don't know. Making enough money for that? Oh, okay. I have no idea. I would like to know more besides him raw dogging her. I'd like to know what his job is. I don't He doesn't know. have a job because she makes the money. So he's just hanging out. Do you benefiting know that for sure? from the money. No. Oh, okay. But I'm just making a prediction. I don't think he does anything. Maybe he's a landscaper. I don't oh, know. God. I doubt he does anything. That would be embarrassing. I'd love to know. Yeah, me too. If you yeah. know, let us know. Let us know in the comments below. Thank y'all. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. She's driving down to Myrtle Beach and she's mad at her dad. And she will not listen to reason about child support nope. or him having a conversation with JJ. She does not think that her father has any right to ask any of these questions which is ludicrous Dumb, and i've yeah. had a teenager before and that teenager happens to be your wife and i'm certainly not going to disparage my teenager but i mean teenage girls are the worst oh 100 they're fucking monsters no i know especially if they're intelligent <laughs> yes. and they have like a sense of themselves yep. like it is so hard to manage a teenage girl oh for sure i know i treated my mom like shit when i was a teenager wait teenage till you have suck. a wait till you have a girl i'll girl, just I'm be not laughing looking forward to. i'll be drinking and laughing i'm not looking forward to it <laughs> really not and then next we have a new couple anaya and daquan yeah day day they're both 17 they're from norfolk virginia i don't know if that's how you pronounce it i don't care um but virginia she's a, yeah norfolk okay norfolk 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 yeah norfolk <laughs> <laughs> They're from Virginia, and Anaya is a Sagittarius. Daquan is an Aquarius. I knew you would notice that. Love at first sight. Mm. Um, they <laughs> she started birth control on March twenty second, and they conceived their baby on March thirtieth <laughs> because they're dumb and they didn't realize that birth control takes time mm -hmm. to work. Mm -hmm. She said that Daquan was putting in that effort. To and test that, it. And that dick. That dick. Putting that dick in. Yeah. Can't you wear a condom? Nope. Put a condom on until the, the birth control kicks in, kids. I mean, what are we doing here? I don't know. But they're they're having a baby boy, and she's naming it after her. She loves herself quite a lot, don't you think? Uh, yeah. She's all about herself. Isn't that what her mom said? Yes. 100% yeah. all she's about herself. She's into herself. So instead of Anaya, she's naming the baby Anias. <laughs> So Which is just really funny to me. I just think it's ridiculous. <laughs> so dumb. And then you have her maternity photo shoot with the blue roses. Things and she's have like, really changed since I had a maternity photo shoot. Oh, which, my God. Which was just my then husband taking a picture of me outside of the Cracker Barrel. <laughs> just like, in a dress. Oh, my God. Not naked or No, nothing. in overalls. <laughs> just fat as fuck that was my maternity <laughs> shoot but now we got kids out here rolling around on the ground in like blue feathered lingerie or whatever I'm like, like what looking better doing? than eve the mother of humans yeah God. <laughs> i'm like girl i can't she's so extra she is and daquan's just going along with it what can he do i mean you tested and you failed the birth control so here we are you so this is what it is yeah um, they're having some kind of a baby shower for her. So she's in the process of uh, creating the best, most glamorous baby shower ever. With polar bears and elephants, elephants and <laughs> Christmas trees. And I'm just like, 
Oh my God, back in my day, we went to Ruth's Chris and it was me and like six girls and they gave me some presents and it was awesome. But like, no, we got to have elephants. My mom had a baby shower with uh, all the people from our church and it was just like old people gifts and, and diapers and stuff. Which is And fine. my mom's fat as fuck. Yeah. And she's like, I hate this. <laughs> just give me my free shit and Things go. have changed. Yeah. Like, wow. It's so crazy. And Anaya's mom, Ashley, had her at 17 as well, but she said she had no issues being a teen mom. She was fine with it. Her mom was supportive, but now she's worried about Anaya because she's self-centered AF Mm -hmm. and spoiled AF. And she's like, you can't prioritize doing your nails and your hair over, you know, buying baby food and taking care of your baby. Yeah, but how much money do you want to bet that when it comes time for her to ask for money for her nails and for her car and for her gas, she's going to go to mommy and mommy's going to give it to her. And these parents are going to continue to spoil their kids and be so shocked that they're spoiled. Like, um, Tuna Can Tyler from yeah. My Strange Addiction, <laughs> which we did cover on Patreon. On Patreon, with yeah. With the mother who started giving him cans of tuna <laughs> under the Christmas tree when he was like seven years old. And yeah. now he's a, like a 35-year-old man who yeah. just puts tuna cans in his apartment and he fucking dabs himself with tuna <laughs> fucking juice. And yeah. she's shocked. She's like, why does my son do this yeah well let's go back to his seventh year at christmas these yeah parents they drive me crazy <laughs> i know it's not a shock you have a spoiled kid i know lady ashley's acting like she just created this kid out of nowhere she's like i don't know where she gets it from and i'm like girl you're influencing it mm-hmm. what are you doing i don't know i feel like anaya is gonna be nothing but drama i don't know i kind of like her really there's just there were times when she smiled and she seemed really joyous i don't know there was there was a vibe 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 check where i thought oh she's she's a sweet girl she's just caught up in all this yeah bullshit and what she thinks it's supposed to be and how she wants it to be but i think in there we've got some raw materials maybe for a good person good mom but they ain't going to last. No. Day Day's going to run. Day Day's going to cheat. Oh, I can yeah. tell you right now, Day Day's going to cheat. He's not ready for this world and this life. He's going to run. Oh, totally. I mean, the way he looks in the interviews, he is so dangected. He's just in there just staring <laughs> just at the camera like <laughs> dead eyes. He's dead inside. Yeah, he's all dead inside. Boys, he's gone limp. Yeah, he's gone limp. <laughs> it's so sad. But yeah, I mean, to Anaya's credit, I mean, she graduated early, top of her class. So she's obviously a very smart girl. Hopefully she's working or something. Maybe hopefully Day Day's working and helping paying for the baby. But I don't know. In the preview, it seems like she's going to have kind of a a hard birth because she has to get induced mm-hmm. so i don't know hopefully their baby's okay and we'll see where they go from there yes and then last but not least speaking of spoiled little brats oh my god we have kaylee and graham right and the mother's name is mandy mandy and then that old ass father who's supposed to be 59 years old he looks like he's 79 years <laughs> old it's a fucking groomer yep that mother mandy is like the saddest woman on reality tv she is beaten down yep she's looking back at her life and asking herself why she made the choices that she did but then she was groomed into Uh a lot of those choices and now you have this daughter who's out here pregnant and you have to furnish her entire life according to what she wants i mean she wants a fucking car i'm going crazy i know she wants a car but as soon as she has to drive the car, she's like, I can't drive the car. Uh-uh. Can you pull over? This is the worst day of my life. Oh, oh God. Grow the fuck up. I know. Well, she's only 15, but it's like still. That's true. She's That's true. so spoiled, though. Like, she's like telling her parents, like, yeah, thank you for my car. Like, I was expecting it for my sweet 16 because, you know, all my other siblings got cars. So I'm glad that I finally got one. Meanwhile, Mandy's like. Yeah, it was kind of hard for me and Jeff to get her this car, but we did it. And I feel like we don't get any credit for everything that we do. And Kaylee just sits there and laughs at it. Like she doesn't even give her mom credit. She's like, hopefully one day in the future when they look back, they'll know all of the sacrifices I made to love you. But she won't because you'll continue to spoil her and she'll continue to get her way. Oh, yeah. Because when she passes her permit test and she drives home and she gets all freaked out on the back roads by making a turn, she's like, I can't do this. You guys are going to have to drive me around everywhere in the car that you bought me and also get me 
gas money yeah. for the car that you bought me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck, girl? But they're going to do it. They are. And so this is what you have created. Yep. And now we've got somebody who's bringing another life into the world who does not have any responsibility outside of the little job for $8 an hour that she's got at the diner. She doesn't know how to do life and you're not helping her to do life. Nope. And that, the buck stops with you, Mandy. I mean, hello. It's yeah. always the parents' fault. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's, what are we doing? And it's really Mandy because she's the most present there. I don't know who this chucklehead father is just sitting on the couch looking 90 years old. I mean, he's probably going to bed at 4 p.m. Right. Eating his tapioca pudding. That's, oh, my God. And his <laughs> insurer. <laughs> Good night, ladies. <laughs> For real. Take care of your damn self. I'm like, are you still working or are you retired? Are you on Medicare? Like, And I'm looking around their house and I'm like, do they live in a manufactured they home? Do. I mean, you aren't rich people. No. You're buying this young, spoiled brat a new car that she's promptly unwilling to drive. And yep. it's like, you guys can't even afford the nice things for yourself. I know. Mandy, why are you with this loser, this 59-year-old loser? You could get rid of this man, get a little happy, get some therapy. I know. And find yourself another man or just be alone. You don't need this man. For real. Worthy up. Thank you. <laughs> Hashtag, Hashtag worthy, worthy up. up. God, I just, I really don't like Kaylee too much just because of her attitude because she's so young and so immature and so spoiled. Even Graham, her boyfriend is like, yeah, my parents have been telling me growing up that I have to buy my own car. Everybody else bought their car, but you got daddy's money. And she goes, no, daddy and mom's money. Yeah. It's like, oh God, you're so unaware of how spoiled you are. I know. And it would be one thing if they had a lot of money. Yeah. And it wasn't like any consequence for them to just get you whatever the fuck you wanted. But these people are struggling to provide this for you and you are taking it for granted. Yep. Oh, I hate that. I can't. No respect for that. None at all. And then we have the preview for, I guess, the rest of the season or maybe the next episode. We already talked about Anaya getting induced um, and it's very scary. And then we get to meet. Lily and Lawrence, and Lily was on prior seasons. So what research have you done into that so that we understand who Lily and Lawrence are? Yeah, so Lily was on season one. She had a kid with some guy named James or something, and then some shit happened with baby daddy James. I don't know all the lore, and I don't care. And then she came back on season four with boyfriend Lawrence and has been with him ever since and now they have two other kids so she's got three kids and they're only 22 or 21 or something oh my gosh and so we're just going to be seeing their parenting journey i guess because she's like oh my god it's so hard to have more than one kid i was absolutely being facetious i did not think you did any research i was basing my comment on (laughs) the review that somebody left for you that got you super upset not upset but you're just like fuck you fuck you well they came for me they came you in particular because i'm aggressive in particular yeah because you're aggressive because i have aggressive takes and i don't do my research on some reality tv listen we i asked you we asked you the raccoons asked you to pick up vanderpump rules yeah. in the 11th season and you were a trooper to go through season 10 yeah. and then just pick right up now we're doing the same thing with unexpected we're trying to please everybody but God. you don't get mad at beatrice because she doesn't know what happened seven years ago she's doing the best that she can yeah. don't make me come for you they literally told me do your job <laughs> I have a full-time <laughs> job and then I do this. Oh my God. Do I'm your like, job. what the heck? Well, listen, we get a lot of negative reviews. We get a lot of positive reviews. And by the way, your positive reviews offset the negative they reviews. Mean a lot. And they help us in our heart yeah. and in our spirit to feel motivated to continue to sit Thank down you. in these dumb, uncomfortable <laughs> chairs and talk about trashy <laughs> teen people. Yeah. So whoever you were, I, I need you to reconsider because yeah. Beatrice does a great job. And this is reality TV. Why are we taking this shit seriously? This is reality TV cringe podcast. Yeah. We don't give a no. We're on a dumpster. Back We're to the wearing preview. wigs. Anyway. Back to the preview. <laughs> wigs? <laughs> yeah, it's her real hair, actually. <laughs> or I'm just wearing a wig. Anyway, so we meet Lillian Lawrence. We have Emily telling her dad that she's moving in with Nate. As soon as she gives birth, she's also only 10 days away from getting given birth, by yeah. the way. I forgot to mention that when we were in a segment. And then we also have Matt, Jenna's dad, talking to JJ mm-hmm. about how he needs to step it up and be a man and accept the fact that she's got another kid. Right. Which I'm sure he's going to and it's going to be a silly forced conversation. But that's it. 
Okay. Well, I look forward to it nonetheless. I love when we get into the parents. Me too. And the dynamics because there's usually like a divorce or we got some fucked up grooming situation with Mandy and the old man. Like you really get a sense of who these kids are and what they're probably going to do with their own children. Yeah. So I'm into it. I am too. So, okay, well, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get out of here, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, please go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a good five-star review. Five. Please say something nice. Oh, my uh, God. I don't care. No, leave just... us a good <laughs> five-star review. It really helps us grow the pod, so thank you so much. It does. We are going to be back later this week to do uh, a Sister Wives yeah. Rewind. We're getting into My Sister Wives Closet. Yeah. So if you're interested in that, which you should be, make sure to come back for that. And until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.